Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is a, uh, I guess 25th lecture of Graph Theory Part 1 series. In this end, Part 2 of Tarzan's Algorithm for Strongly Connected Component. So, let's get started. So, uh, in the first part of Tarzan's Algorithm, we have seen that how we can use or utilize low link value to calculate strongly connected component, but we have also seen that low link value completely cannot be used to uh, to to find strongly connected component because there were some problems with it and I have also explained the same with uh, taking two examples first and second uh, the problem was that if you uh, the low link value of a node completely depends upon the order of DFS execution so if the DFS ex execution order changes it is very likely that the low link values also change and that is why we were not able to completely use low link value for calculation of strongly connected components so what we did was i told you guys that tarzan has suggested that we can use certain restrictions using which we can uh, we can um, impose on the nodes to calculate low link value and what the suggestion is that during the execution of dfs and low link value calculation uh Tarzan's algorithm keep track of the active nodes so if a node say u wants to minimize its low link value using the low link value or using node v then v must be in the active node list so if you are using certain other node to minimize your low link value then that other node must be inside the active node list so now we have an active node list and how how we'll be utilizing this how uh, what are the implementation details and all of that i'll be explaining you with an example so let's let's see uh, suppose this is the input graph and we have to find the total number of strongly connected component uh, this will be using this will be the stack in which all of the nodes which are inside the stack will be called the active nodes basically this is your active list so and to check whether a node is inside the stack or not we'll be using this array because if uh, you cannot check the stack whether current node like six is inside the stack or not because uh, from stack you can only access the top top value of the stack so we'll be using an array to keep track which element is inside this stack so if an element or if any node is inside the stack then the value of that node uh, let's call this uh, is valid or on stack array so the value of the, that node in the on stack array would be one uh, if it is not present in the stack then its value would be zero currently there are no nodes in the stack that is why the value of each node on the on stack array is zero so suppose we start our dfs traversal from node 3 so on stack uh, first of all since you have you as soon as you visit certain node you would insert it into the stack also you'd mark it one in the on stack array after that you start traversing its node right sorry its edges so suppose from 3 you are traversing this edge and it goes to node 4 since node 4 is not visited what you would do you would first make a dfs call to node 4 right so we made a dfs call to node 4 yeah uh, we need to keep track the low link value and the in time of a node so uh, i am representing it by p by q form in the p by q form where p represents in time q represents low link value so the initially in time and the low link time values are same that is why both are one one so from node 3 we made a dfs call to node 4 and its low link value and the in time would be 2 2 right and also we inserted node 4 into the stack and mark it on the mark it 1 in the on stack array from 4 there is one edge which goes to 8 and since 8 is not visited so we would make a dfs call to node 8 it will also be inserted in the stack as soon as you reach certain node you would insert it into the stack and also mark it in the on stack array so i have reached node 8 initialize it in time and low link value inserted in the stack and also marked it in on stack array from node 8 there is one edge only and that goes to 4 but 4 is already visited right so since 4 is already visited you can use node force in time to reduce 
the uh, low link value of this node right it is almost the same but before minimizing it is almost the same as the previous lecture as i have explained in the previous lecture but before minimizing using node 4 we have to see whether node 4 is inside on stack or not for that we will see whether on stack value of 4 is 1 or not and since on stack value of 4 is 1 that indicates that 4 is inside the uh, what we call it active node list and that is why we can use node 4's value to minimize the low link value of node 8 and we would do that so minimum uh, low link value of 8 would become 2 and how we did that since 4 was already visited so low link value of 8 uh, you can minimize you can use the in time of node 4 to minimize in time uh, low link value of node 8 if certain node is already visited this i have already explained in the previous lecture if certain node is already visited then you will use its in time right otherwise use you will use its low link value since 4 was already visited so we will use its in time in time is 2 and a uh, low link value of 8 was initially 3 so minimum of 3 and 2 is 2 so low link value of 8 would become 2 now there is nothing to explore for node 8 we return from here as soon as you return you uh, basically you backtrack you are on node 4 right uh, node 4 is also having only a single edge which is traversed we were uh, from node for we are we were having this edge only and we have traversed it after you are coming back from the dfs call what you do you try to minimize your low link value using the low link value of this node right when a certain node is not visited what you do you make a dfs call to that node and after the dfs call of that node has completed you minimize your low link value with low link value of that node right so uh, we made dfs call to node 8 dfs call of node 8 has completely executed now we will minimize our low link value with low link value of 8 low link value of node 4 is 2 and low link value of node 8 is 2 so nothing would change after complete execution of all of the edges you would see whether now uh, this part comes where you will check for strongly connected component and what is that after checking after traversing your all edges all out edges right what you do you see whether your in time is equals to your low link value and see for node 2 in time we have also tested it before returning we have also tested it for 8 i have not mentioned it yet but low link value of 8 was not equal to its in time but for node since for node 4 we have traversed all of its out edges before returning we will see whether the out in time of node 4 is equal to its low link value if that is true that means we have found a strongly connected component keep popping all of the elements from stack up to node 4 so we would pop out 8 you are removing 8 from here so you would mark it on, uh, in the on stack array 0 right so 8 we have removed now we, would re we will remove 4 we have removed 4 from here and also mark it as 0 and 8 and 4 were part of stream strongly connected component and we have found one strongly connected component right so how do we do that after execution of all of the edges before returning what we see we see whether current nodes in time is equals to its uh, low link value if that happens that means we have found a strongly connected component and pop out each element up to the current node we have popped out eight and four these two lie in the same strongly connected component as you can see eight and four form a single strongly connected component after you have completed execution of four you would return to three eight uh, i mean the red color indicates uh, execution of this node has completed now we have used this edge completely now what we do we will try to minimize low link value of us with low link value of node four basically low link we will try to minimize low link value of node 3 with low link value of node 4 but before that we'll see whether 4 exists on the stack or not on stack value of 4 is 0 that means you cannot uh, node 3 cannot utilize node 4's low link value to minimize its low link value because 4 is not on the active list so now the other edge of 3 is this so we would make a dfs call to 1 because 1 is not already visited so we would make a dfs call to node 1 we would reach node 1 we would insert it into the stack and also mark it in the on stack array and of course its 
in time and rolling value would be initialized by 4 because previous in time was 3 in time never decreases in time start from 1 and keeps on increasing as as you keep on reaching the new node so we were here at 1 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and of course rolling value is initialized with in time so from here there is only one as this but node 2 is not visited so we would make a dfs call to node 2 and it's load uh, loading value and in time would be initialized by 5 by 5 and also we would insert 2 in the stack and on stack value of 2 would be 1 now uh, for 2 there are two out edges let's see let's let us explore this one we can minimize loading value of 2 using 8 but the problem is 8 is not in the active list because uh, on stack value of node 8 is 0 so we cannot use node 8 to minimize loading value of node uh, node 2 right for the second edge again node 3 is visited again we will see whether we can uh, minimize loading value of node 2 using node 3 or not for that we will see whether node 3 is on the active list or not yes it is in the active list because on stack value of node 3 is 1 so we can utilize node 3 but since node 3 is already visited so we will use its in time although it doesn't matter whether we use in time or loading value because both are them uh, both of them are same but still it is important to mention that we are using in time not loading value because node 3 is visited already so a minimum of 5 and 1 is 1 so loading value of 2 would be minimized to 1 there's nothing to explore for node 2 so we would return from here we are now at 1 and since 1 made dfs call to 2 now 1 would minimize its low link value using the low link value of node 2 and low link value of node 2 was 1 so low link value of node 2 uh, node 1 will also become 1 because minimum of 4 comma 1 is 1 of course there's nothing left here to explore of course as we are going back or we are track uh, backtracking we are also checking whether the in time is equals to low link value or not in time of is not equal to low link value so we will do nothing again we have traversed everything here so we are going back but before that we'll see whether my in time is equals to low link value again that is not true so backtracking to node 3 from here there is nothing to explore because we have explored this edge we have explored this edge for 3 there is nothing left so before returning we'll see whether low link value is equals to the in in time or not and that is true here in that case we have found another strongly connected component so pop out element from the stack till you reach the current node which is 3 so pop out 2 as soon as you pop out 2 from here you also mark that node here 0 right pop out 1 and pop out 3 all of these three nodes are part of a single strongly connected component after that you would simply return from here now the same order uh, the same thing will uh, will happen for these nodes as well so i'm not taking uh, further i'm not explaining those further because the process will be exactly same let me show you the code how this is going so what we are doing here is that i'll be providing the code in the description of the video so don't worry about that you can uh, see this code later and uh, understand this so what i'm doing here i'm reading nnm indicating the number of nodes and then the number of edges after that i'm reading the edges uh, in the form of ab that indicates there is an edge from a to b that's why in the graph i'm inserting in the adjacency list of a i'm inserting b all of this uh, the adjacency list representation and all of the uh, lectures i have uh, all of these things i have already explained in the previous lecture of graph theory part one so if you haven't watched those lectures because this is lecture 25 if you haven't watched the previous lecture i think you should uh, or if you are comfortable with adjacency list representation dfs or anything that uh, anything that i'm using here that you're good to go what we are doing here we are reading m edges because this runs this is a for loop that runs from one to m since there are m edges reading the edges and the adjacency list of a i'm inserting b after the graph is completely formed i'm initializing the visited and on stack value to false let me show you the variables so this is graph vector of int graph this is visited array that we use in dfs and that is on stack array this is basically this array and we have two integers array in and low time and we are using a stack timer is initialized with one and strongly connected component is initialized zero this would keep count of how many strongly connected component we have found what i'm doing here after that 
running a loop from 1 to n and if ith node is not visited i am making a dfs call to that node and this is the input for this graph so if you run this code provide the input you see the uh, first strongly connected component that we have found contains two nodes 8 and 4 so we see node 8 and node 4 are part of the same strongly connected component now the second scc comprises of 3 2 and 1 you can see these three are the nodes uh, of the same strongly connected component similarly 6 7 and 5 form a single strongly connected component that i'm printing and how how am i doing that see in the dfs what you are doing as soon as you are reaching what you are doing you, you are marking the current node as visited you are initializing its in time and rolling time you are marking it on the on stack array to be true basically is one and in the stack we are inserting the current after that what you do for each you travel the out edges for each node in the adjacency list of current node what we are doing but if the current node is already visited what you do you try to minimize your uh, low link value but how you do you first check whether that node is inside on stack or not so what you do you see if the node is visited then you will see whether that node is inside the on stack uh, array or not basically it is in the active list or not if that is that then you can minimize the low link value of current node using the in time of the neighbor node right that is what we do otherwise if the current node is unvisited that means you need to make a dfs call and that is exactly what we do Where, when we see node 4 was not visited we first make a dfs call and after we come back or basically backtrack then we minimize our low link value using the low link value of this node so what we are doing if the neighbor is not visited what we are doing we are making dfs call to that neighbor after that after the backtracking what we are checking we are checking whether that node is still on the stack or whether that node is still on the active list or not if that is then we can minimize our low link value using the low link value of our neighbor after you have traversed all of the out edges what you do you see whether the in time and low link value of current node is same or not if that is same then increment the total uh, since we have found a new strongly connected company we are in incrementing scc size we are printing that this is the fifth or sixth scc and then keep on uh, removing element from the keep on removing node from the stack and keep on printing them if you the current node is equals to uh, basically current uh, a pop popped out node is equals to the current node then you simply stop and that is how you found how you apply strongly uh Tarzan's algorithm to calculate strongly connected component i'll be providing this code in the description of the video so you can use this code later and study from it so this was all for this lecture if you have any doubt or query of course you can ask in the comment section so thank you guys for watching and if you have any problem such as, uh, suggestion using that we can solve using Tarzan's algorithm, you're more than welcome to suggest that in the comment section. So thank you guys for watching. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.